In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hi, welcome to the In The Last Days television program with myself, Martin Blackham, and with my wife, Natalie Blackham. The In The Last Days television program is the program that looks at Israel. We look at what's happening in the news, and we feature interviews. And we've got a very special program uh, today for you, Natalie and I felt, with everything that was happening in Gaza and uh, with the Operation uh, Protective Edge, that it was very important for you uh, to understand. Many of you will already know this, but the, the bias in the media so we're going to particularly talk about that today and also uh, we're going to talk about the importance of the work that we're doing uh, for you. Now, uh, we know that a lot of you are watching uh, on Revelation Television, so we are very grateful to the support of uh, Howard and Leslie and the team there at Revelation TV. And we do hope that we can do uh, more live kind of shows uh, because what's happening in Israel is so important that you almost need to know on a daily basis that it's it isn't just uh, you know that's something you can know in kind of retrospect but you need to know straight away so we're looking to do that to enable us uh, to enable us to do that we do need your support and we're going to be talking in the program how you can do that so let's get straight into the things have you you're going to start Natalie with yeah and I think it's very important for you to know that you know what's happening in Israel because we are here we are really able to tell you uh, what's up here, and the media is not really telling you the it's truth. Biased. Yeah, very much. And because we live here, we can see things. I'm working also with uh, Magen David Adom, which is the emergency services of Israel, so we know really what's happening and the reality here. Like from today, we had uh, 2,744 rockets who've been already fired at Israel. So when you see that, you know, Martin, is like uh, three rockets per half an hour That's thrown onto Israel, which means like five millions of Israelis are under fire, which means that, you know, we listen, even us, we, we, we are listening, is the siren going? Now, we are very fortunate because in Jerusalem, we had it where we are, sorry, not just in Jerusalem, but just where we are, we had it only twice. And this, the fire much more in the south and Tel Aviv region, so it's not as much as us. But very quickly, we have this surge uh, inside of us, and it's like, okay, I need to listen to what's happening. In the south, you need to know that the people, they go to take the shower, and they still have to listen, and they, they don't know when. Well, even as, even as we're recording this program for you today from uh, the studio uh, in Jerusalem, we could have to suddenly stop because the siren... There is the potential that the air raid siren, the code red, will go off and that we have to uh, go to the secure room, to the bomb shelter now. Uh I, I, I just wanted to say also one, two things. For you to know how it is for the Israelis, there is two websites that you can look at. Have at the corner even of your computer, which is because we don't want just to give you information. There is enough uh, TVs who are doing that want to give you information, obviously, but also that you can pray. This is our work as Christians. We need to do and we need to pray, first of all. And so I want to give you these two websites. One is called um, Israel has been rocket free for, and so Isaac is a clock, and tell you every time that a rocket is sent into Israel, the clock starts again. And we love to see this, this clock already stop forever. So you can have that. It's called Israel has been rocket free for, okay? And there is another website which is like the red alert. So again, you can have, you can also download it. And every time that a siren or that a red alert, which is like the siren is sent, uh, you will have, you can have it coming onto your computer and it show you where it is. And you know that people are running into the shelters if they have shelters. Now, a lot of people, um, more and more because of all these attacks, Israel know how life is so holy. And a lot of people also are fundraising for bomb shelters. I saw yesterday again a uh, Jewish National Fund who do a lot for, for trees usually. Now they are doing for bomb shelters because they know that it's for the survival of their own people and the next generation. Uh, and, you know, 
because it takes time for this program to be broadcast, it is possible uh, that a permanent, even a permanent ceasefire may have been announced in Gaza. So we understand that and um, the program isn't kind of looking retrospectively at the war. The program is looking at the problem with the media of the coverage of Israel. Uh, and as I say, many of you are very aware of this, but we want to kind of help, try and help you, encourage you in your Israel advocacy. Now, the first thing, and some of you may not know this, but the first thing that is important to establish is who are Hamas, because if we don't know who they are, then uh, we can just watch the news uh, and uh, see refugees being pulled out of rubble and not know what the background is. Now, and Hamas... You're right, and be swamped in the political things when we don't see, we need to see and discern what's happening. Uh, Hamas is a, an Islamic organization uh, and since 2007 it has governed the Gaza Strip. It was elected by the majority of the population. In other words, the population of Gaza has chosen for Hamas to be in charge. Uh, they won the 2006 Palestinian parliamentary elections for this area. Now, the important thing to know is that it's designated as a terrorist organization, not just by Israel, but by Western and non-Western governments, including the United States, who's putting pressure as we speak on Israel, Canada, the European Union, Jordan. Jordan, it's in Jordan, Hamas is a terrorist organization, Egypt, uh, Japan, and even um, in Saudi Arabia, the Hamas is recognized as a terrorist organization. So Israel is facing a terrorist organization, but the problem is, is in the news coverage uh, that we're getting out of the BBC and that you're getting in the United Kingdom uh, for those of our uh, uh, friends and uh, partners who are watching from the United Kingdom is that you're getting news like this. This is from the Observer just yesterday. It says, and I, I, if I can get that on the camera, it says, a, a pause in the bombing and the ruins of Gaza are laid bare. And there's a lady standing in front of a property. Um, now, from this news story, it would appear that uh, Israel is the aggressor against these innocent civilians in Gaza. But what they don't show, and if we can get this on the camera, this is the center of uh, Gaza. You can see what is the most important thing in Gaza, what is the thing that they are celebrating, is we've got a rocket on an island. There's a, a display, a rocket display, to commemorate uh, the firing of rockets at Israel. Uh, in the center of Gaza, that's the main thing. So what the news is doing is they are not explaining the situation regarding Hamas being a terrorist organization. Now, you have to understand that Hamas, when people talk about peace, and you'll see this is a thing that everybody's talking about, the United Nations currently is talking about peace, John Kerry's talking about peace, and they're trying to do peace with a terrorist organization whose charter and let, let me read out what their charter says. The charter says, our struggle against the Jews is very uh, great and very serious. And their charter is to, to wipe out Israel and to kill all the Jews. That's in their charter. You can look on the internet. It's clearly put. And it says that the time will come, will, the time will come, um, uh, not come until Muslims will fight the Jews and kill them, until the Jews hide behind rocks and trees which cry out, a oh, Muslim as a Jew hiding behind the tree, come and kill him. And this is in the Hamas charter. So their goal is to retake Israel as far as they can see, kill all of the Jews, or remove, or that they be removed from Israel. All around the world too, this is the thing. Because now when you see what's happening, you have all these demonstrations happening in Paris, in London, in uh, Chicago, I mean all around the world, you know, maybe some small and some big, but this is the same, it's like people from Hamas who wants to kill the Jews. Now what's happening is like the Jews are really threatened now in, again, all around the world. Obviously more where, where they are, which is like um, in, in France, but also in New York. We have loads of, of information. Now, if you wanted to follow, it's like in the last days, program TV, isn't it, it's called. Mm -hmm. And when we have some news from Israel and also from, from uh, America, from France, there is really things happening. Um, there was a, a synagogue also in France who was like, like the Jews were uh, stuck in it and there was a Hamas demonstration around. 
things that happen also in New York. I mean, all around there is things happening even in Canada, and usually Canada supports very much Israel. So uh, this is, we are living really in dangerous things, and you need to go into um, stop watching so much the main media because they don't tell you all all the story, the real story. And so please follow our Facebook. Follow also. Um, there is uh, like even the IDF does have a website now. They understand the IDF is the Israeli Defense Force, and I really like because I was speaking with a friend and she was saying, "Look, it's called Defense Force. It's not. It's to defend the people." I like. Obviously, Israel has to do something when five millions out of eight millions inhabitants are under fire. Every country, democratic country, will uh, do something about the civilians. They, they have, they have to. So this is very important. You know, that's uh, the interesting thing, Natalie, is the, the bias that we're seeing in the media. And this is the main thing because, you know, the, the conflicts in Israel can begin and start very quickly. But the, the, the bias uh, against Israel in the media is so profound. Now, uh, and actually, you know, the BBC is disgraceful in their coverage. That's yeah. the only, w that's the only w uh, as a journalist, that's the only way I can put the BBC coverage because it's not accurate. For example, uh, I've got a, uh, another picture. I'll try and get that on the camera for you. It says, these Hamas rockets threaten the majority of Israel's population. And then it goes through the different type of um, rockets that are being fired at Israel. And you've got to remember, these were being fired at Israel before Operation Protective Edge started. They've been firing rockets and people have been going into shelters in Israel uh, long before Operation Protective Edge. Now this is, this is um, Natalie was telling you about the clock. Yeah. It says, Hamas terrorists in Gaza have fired more than, and this was um, from, this is uh, out of she date, obviously. Yeah. And it says 2,450 rockets. And then I've got, uh, there's a, it's interesting that um, uh, where the rockets come from uh, or, or missiles. Actually, it's interesting um, because uh, we were talking the other day that it was important for people to realize they're not just rockets in the sense of some small uh, explosive device, but they are missiles being fired. And where are the missiles made? Syria and Iran make them. Uh, China are making these missiles that Gaza are using. Russia are making them. Uh, some of them are actually made in the West Bank themselves, which gets me on to another point, which is that... This is Iran. You know, Iran now are happy not to give the rockets to, to them. They tell them how to make them. So they don't have all the transport and all these kind of things. And so they are factories. And, and again, you know, again, when the IDF right now is going over there, is not to kill civilians is to kill the terrorists, is to kill not just, is not just to kill the people, is to kill the factories, is to kill the tunnels. Now, again, we're saying all these negative things, but we know that above all these things, it's just amazing how God is keeping Israel. We, we, now we are starting to hear stories that Hamas was planning to do invasion through all the tunnels, and they find like, many tunnels, I, cap I, I can't remember the, the, the number because every time they find new, they have some, you know, some new, uh, the, 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 the numbers are obviously is going up and up. And they are destroying them. It's very dif difficult to destroy the tunnels because they are kilometers of, of cement they, they done in an amazing way. Uh, one tunnel is three million dollars. And you can build, you see, again, Israel has been so kind with Hamas and with Gaza, not with Hamas directly, okay. Israel has been kind with the people who live in Gaza and left the border open. And so the cement was going over there and they didn't build houses, they built some, but they built so many tunnels and one tunnel is three million dollars. And, and so this is kind of amazing and so now, they were preparing all these tunnels, were going into Israel, were going into very close to the kibbutz. And so he arrived just up, and they arrived in, in fields, in next to the kibbutz. Um, and we want to show you now, there is a YouTube of a young lady, and she's telling you 
directly how it is for her that which is amazing you know looking at that she's saying we are used to the rockets now we know how to deal with it which is already so amazing that they say that but now we are not used to know that we can be in our kibbutz and suddenly we can have invasion of of hamas terrorists they had idf uniform is is not just little tunnels they they can have like mopeds going there they have munitions i mean it's just amazing so listen to her and she's speaking to you directly now but what i wanted to speak about is what's going on here in israel for the last um two weeks almost um i don't know how you see the idf in the news overseas i'm sure that many times um, israel is portrayed as the bad guy but i know as a citizen and many times we did have um, negative feelings about this that the idf is very very humane sometimes so humane that they will not bomb a building or, or a car or I don't know what because they know there are children nearby, a hospital nearby and so they will just let a terrorist run free, go dig his tunnel, go shoot his Qassam bomb, whatever, um, just as long as, as the IDF doesn't hurt anyone that is innocent. So I know that many children and, and, um, and women and innocent people have been injured and killed this time around, but you have to understand we do not sit here and applaud their death. It's very tragic for us to see. It's very sad for us to see. When I hear on the news that a child has died in Gaza, it breaks my heart. We do not feel happy about that. I feel very bad for the people in Gaza who are not in the Hamas, who are innocent. It's, it's just a horrible situation to be in. And so it, that was important for me to say that we, we aren't happy about this happening. It's very, very sad. And the IDF and, um, um, and our Prime Minister and everyone always says that they are sorry and it's horrible and no one's proud or happy about that happening. So. And uh, this morning I woke up from um, a Seva Don Alarm and um, um, I went to the safety room, I met my family there and after it fell my father told me that they found a tunnel outside our kibbutz, they killed nine or ten um, Hamas terrorists that were already out of the tunnel. It's a spa I can see it from here. It's a space outside of our kibbutz um, where we go for picnics and stuff. Um, during February and March, there's these beautiful flowers there. So people come from all over Israel. And they just came out of this hole and started walking around. And uh, thank God the IDF saw them and, um, and they uh, took care of the problem. But um, they have found a way into our homes now. And that is scary because now I can't walk around in the kibbutz and just know, okay, where the, where the closest shelter is and just be aware and awake because now they're just digging their way up from Gaza into our country. And it's a whole new threat and it's a very scary threat to walk around your own home and be afraid. So um, we are very happy for you to see this video to give you, you know, firsthand how the people are here in Israel. Now we want to tell you so that Hamas, how do you build tunnels? You have, they, they were using some young people and 160 of their own people, children, have been killed and this is from uh, Hamas officials some people have done some studies and it wasn't really taken seriously or wasn't in the media but they knew already about all these things and uh, this is one of the things that they say Hamas say using children as much as in Victorian coal mine they are prized for their nimble bodies and this is the way how you know how they are thinking we need to understand they have a way of thinking which is not a civilized way. They, they want to kill, 
this is their motivation they love death and we're listening also to a interview from the son of Hamas and he was saying you know we've been educated in in the way that death is important that we have to give some of we, we need to give our lives to be victorious and death is okay so we, it's their way of thinking and when you see in Israel is that life is so important well it means and Hamas being as violence in Hebrew yes also you know that the IDF has built a hospital field for treating the Gazan people and this is to show you how much Israel love life know how precious is life and is what one thing that we say now here life is fragile we need to protect it it's so important and you know one of the things is that uh, this is a war that we're currently facing and currently in the midst of and uh, as I've said you know it could be when the program goes out that there's a permanent ceasefire but you know there's a war for not just in the sense of the Israeli army having to tackle terrorism tack tackling terrorists who have no moral code and are using evil means uh, to promote their warfare but there's also war in the media and uh, you know the the, the uh, I mentioned the BBC but you know it's not just the BBC but the Sky News is disgraceful their their coverage of, of, of the conflict because they do not give the context a journalist when he's on the scene should give the context of the battle if he's in a if you cover uh, uh, a, a situation you have to give the context who are the different par parties to the conflict what are you seeing now they're showing uh, and this has been on Sky News they're showing rubble they're showing destroyed buildings with no context we don't know what those buildings were used for we don't know if those buildings were used as uh, rocket bases to attack Israel we don't know who the people are that are standing outside the building and unfortunately we have seen uh, I mean it's been prevalent for a few years so it's not a recent thing but we've seen the the standard of journalism is very poor now sometimes they can't get information that's understandable but excuse me you know the information about Hamas about the rockets about them using human shields about them using hospitals about them using schools is all on the internet it's not something difficult for a journalist who's in the field to be able to access the internet they have Wi-Fi they can see all these things but they are concealing it on purpose and they're not telling the full story now the importance of our work is to give you all the facts but if to enable us to do that we have to have the ammunition just like the Israeli army and it means that we need your support now at the moment we're uh, raising uh, funds for the uh, television studio for the equipment and we're also raising funds for our um, running costs that's the right way of putting it and it's something in the region of um, about eleven thousand pounds now very easy to support the work we can send you a direct uh, debit form in the post we can pop that to you just uh, let us know that you'd like one you can write to us uh, or email us we'll put the details on your screen how you can do that um, if you are very kind of um, up to date and uh, you know internet savvy and you like all this kind of mod, mod things, modern things, you can use the uh, uh, credit card on PayPal. Just email us and we will send you. I don't know if I've got uh, it's not it's here somewhere, but I've got it. It's you, we'll send you a PayPal invoice and you just fill that in and pop that back to us. And um, you can also make online donations. Just let us know. Uh, yeah, they the go on the website www.inthelastdays.com and uh, you can donate. Yep, yeah, and there's yeah. all the all the information is yeah. on the website. If if you need any information, then please do email us at info at in the last days .com. And for those Natalie who are elderly and stuff, you can do a check or postal order. You can go to your post office and get a postal order, make it payable to Black and Family Ministries, and then send it to Steve and the Rain Holmer Stewart at two. Winham Drive, Fairham, Hampshire, PO 16, 8QE. Please make sure to make your checks or post orders payable to Black and Family Ministries because if we get in the last days, unfortunately, we can't uh, cash them at the moment. So we do appreciate your support and we do need your support. Mm -hmm. And we want to show you also a video which has been made in Vienna 
and it's very interesting because you can see they, they wanted to show the reality. You know, when you live far away, uh, it's more difficult to understand what's happening. And, and also for us here, um, living during the war is not as difficult in one way than the people who are afraid for us. And so I want to tell you, we feel good, um, we feel strong, our children are amazing too. Um, we know that God is there. We know many stories also of people who've been um, saved. I mean, there was like a story with a, with a soldier, he had a grenade in his hand, a bullet arrived and the bullet stopped in the grenade before it exploded. We have a picture and we will show you. And now we want to show you a video who was made in Austria, people who wants to show the reality in Israel. Watch now. <laughs> In Israel, you have 15 seconds to save your life. Well, Natalie, that was a very important video, and I do hope that you'll see the full one. You can go on the internet and see that. It's been great to be with you today. We so much appreciate uh, your support. Remember, you can visit the website at www.inthelastdays.com, and the email address is info at inthelastdays.com. And remember, we're living in the last days. You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station, for the next program from In the Last Days.